Hey guys, welcome to part two of our New Zealand circumnavigation series. So last week we set sail from Auckland headed for Great Barrier Island. We were having an incredible sail, with spinnaker flying beautifully in 12 knots of apparent wind. I wish every sail was like this. When all of a sudden, disaster struck. The whole bow has come up. What? The tack line of the spinnaker ripped the deck completely away from the hull, leaving a gaping hole straight into the boat. You can say what you want, but I'll stick to the facts. I ground and cut away all of the broken fiberglass in order to glue and glass the deck back down to the hull. This was all relatively straightforward, but now the real hard work was about to begin. That's not going to be fun. I removed the remaining cleats and hardware from the deck and started grinding inside the forepeak. This was absolutely horrible because there was no escaping the dust, as it works its way into every nook and cranny of your suit. And for those of you who have done any sort of fiberglass work before, you will know just how itchy that stuff is. I haven't done this kind of work since Linton Bay when we had our bulkhead fiasco. It is so horrible. I can't even describe it. The mask doesn't seal properly, so you're just breathing in fiberglass dust the whole time. My throat just feels like it's cake. But I think I got all of the grinding inside the forepeak done. So I just vacuumed it out. Just the dust goes everywhere. It's such a fine, what's this? It's all of your face. I'm really pushing to try to get this glued down and sealed up tonight because I've ground out so much glass that I'm down to the balsa core in a lot of places. So we just need to get something sealed over that. Because the last thing you want is for it to rain and then water gets into the core of your boat. So we're gonna glue it down now. Uh, Jamie's just wiping it with thinners. We're gonna glue it down, put some batteries and that on it. And then we're gonna run out of epoxy to glass underneath. But that's where the real strength is gonna be, is tabbing it all. Tabbing the deck to the hull, like it should have been done in 2012. Okay, gonna glue it down. We got our total boat, two to one epoxy. Gonna thicken it up. We, just make, we wanna make sure we're not gonna run out. It'd be a disaster. We got halfway through and it started kicking. Before we got the rest on, we'd have to grind it all off again. Then we'll start to make it into a glue rather than just a runny resin. Happy? It's a little bit runny. Oh, that's good. Yeah, it's made contact everywhere. We're just gonna put epoxy over all of this. Again, the idea is to seal it. Oh, I think that's enough for today. What a day. I did a story on Instagram saying, I wish every sail was like this. Literally the last corner as we're coming into the wharf. Rip the bow off the boat. But, that's how she goes sometimes. As long as you know how to fix shit, it's not necessarily a showstopper. All right, we're taking a day off from fiberglass work. That was absolute torture last night. I haven't worked like that since Panama when we were rebuilding the bulkheads. Grinding inside a small space is one of the worst things imaginable. The first mask I was wearing didn't, wasn't a good fit, so glass was getting in. So now my throat just feels like it's lined with fiberglass. Anyway, we're gonna take um, Bob and Liz and the chosen one to my parents' house. The sun's just about coming out. I wanna see their uh, reaction because they've heard about this place for so long. It means obviously so much to me. Um, so now I get to share it with them. Hmm. We're gonna, I'll just take you down to the bay here so you get to see Schooner Bay. Yeah, man. Scooter Bay! <laughs> what a beautiful. I want to get a picture. Yeah, I could be real comfortable just coming down here, yeah. hanging out, having a beer. You look like a natural. I feel like a natural. Looks great. Pretty cool, huh? It's very, very cool. So it's super low tide right now. This is the boat shed that one of our neighbors built for anyone in the community to use. Sort of the community takes care of itself. This is the epitome of the Great Barrier Way. Complete trust in the community to respect each other's property and what goes around comes around. Schooner Bay. Love it. Including this letterbox. And built by hand. And 
ruin the bridge, including the bridge. Every piece of gravel you see down here, he went and got with his own truck. This is where we used to wash. This is it. This was our bath. We had no water for a while. So we uh, tapped into this creek. This creek comes from the top of the hill. Comes, it, it's like a spring, and that's what all the fresh water for the property. And then we supply the neighbors' houses as well. So Dad just taught him how, taught himself how to build this. And he's he's had trucks and all sorts of shit drive over it. Grant right here, Grand McRae, 1998. Ones like this, putting these in place, just it's outright dangerous. Where did he find it? He had a four-ton digger. They were, they were all up and down the creek here. I thought you guys might come off the boat yesterday for a bit of a break. So my dad is a builder, so of course he has a wide range of tools. But with these tools, he built this. This house was 40 years in the making, and both my brother and I chipped in to get it done over the years as well. Dad used mostly swamp cowrie that he had milled decades ago to build here. Oh, look at this. Yeah. And the house overlooks the bay all the way over to the Coromandel Peninsula. Wow. This view will never get old. Loving it? Loving it. <laughs> and nestled in the bush just down from the house is a little off-grid chalet that Dad built, especially for my sister. Which usually just has everyone sitting in silence, soaking up the views and being fully immersed in Mother Nature. By the way, this is cured super solid. You can't dig your nail in. Sometimes if it's not quite cured, you can like press your nail into it a little bit. This is solid. So I know that that is all splurged out there as well. It's all glued down so well. So it's already probably stronger than it was, but we're gonna put um, fiberglass reinforcement under that whole bow area. So that won't rip out again. It was an absolute perler of a day and I had the whole family on board, so the plan was to go fishing for the day. If I look up, where are we going? Whoa! It wasn't long until we caught a yellowtail kingfish, which are beautiful eating. First kingy, it's gotta be 75 centimeters long. Beauty. Fishy, fish, yeah, fish, 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 woo, fish, 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 hey! That's old country call here. We're having a, a, a little bit of a dialing in process now. We've lost uh, three gears so far. We're catching some big fish, so. <laughs> There's dolphins everywhere. biggest pot of dolphins I've ever seen. They are all around us. There's probably 10 of them under the boat right now. So we're right over this spot. It comes up to 60 feet. We're right over it now. So what we're going for here is New Zealand red snapper. That's going to be good. They are plentiful here, like the chicken of the sea, but they have to be 30 centimeters or 11.8 inches to be kept. <laughs> That's the first Look fish I've well caught on my leg. <laughs> and the best part is that they are absolutely delicious. There we go. Great barrier, eh? <laughs> Coming <laughs> through with the goods. Grant's actually put his rod back. Oh! oh! <laughs> nah, nearly. <laughs> How does that look bigger, Brett? Yeah, that looks a lot bigger. I've tied my fingers so you can't see it. No, you do it. I don't want to lose it. Yeah, no, 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 no. You, no, no, you no, do no, it, Grant. No, 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 no
That's that real fucking bad. It's shady! That is pathetic. Man. That is, this is shady. <laughs> took the rod off a 72 year old. <laughs> <laughs> Steal the glory. Oh! Oh, oh it is a big oh. one. Well done. Put your, <laughs> put your finger in there. Jamie, <laughs> hold it up, Jamie. Oh! Jamie. oh. oh. Come on, Jamie. Come on, Jamie. Oh, you're good. <laughs> That's a stitch up. <laughs> we caught enough fish to last the whole family for a week, including sashimi for lunch. So we called it a day and motor sailed back to the anchorage. Family time had been short and sweet, and the plan was to sail up to the other end of Great Barrier the next day, then continue on our circumnavigation of New Zealand. We had 2,000 miles to do in the next two months, so we had a lot of miles to cover. So today we're going to the famous Smokehouse Bay. It's a bay basically set aside for cruisers or boaters. Anyone uh, who comes over here, they've got the pizza oven and a smoker there, and it's just a really communal um, place for anyone that's on the border. So, to be honest, I've never been there myself. Now I've got a boat, I'm going to go there. And mum and dad had so much fun yesterday that they've come along as well. Um, but so I don't have to bring them all the way back. They've got my brother's little tinny. It's called a Staby Craft. Maybe I'll give you guys a little tour of it. It's freaking awesome, man. It's so solid, super light, and um, just bulletproof. Morning, guys. Just making our pizza dough. Apparently, this little guy here is gonna make two 12-inch pizzas. So Katie just found this ancient relic in the drawer. It looks a little suspect. <laughs> Yeah, it apparently expired some time ago. Two years ago, everyone had a little taste. Junko Bog approved, so we're keeping it. They're all going on about it, but they've been eating it for the last three years because I keep topping up the little mustard jar with it. But we bought that the first Pacific Crossing we're meant to do before the bulkheads broke. So they don't know what they're eating around here. <laughs> Captain James Cook was the first European to discover New Zealand on the 6th of October, 1769. He drew accurate and really detailed maps of New Zealand and actually sailed his boat through this very pass called the Man of War Passage. In fact, he named the island Great Barrier for the shelter and protection it provides the Hauraki Gulf. The Māori name for Great Barrier is Aotea and there is a rich Polynesian history here which dates back even way before Captain James Cook. This is Smokehouse Bay. This is a bay that's been basically donated to all the boaters here and it works off like a donation policy. You go and you use the facilities, there's like freshwater tubs for doing your laundry, there's clotheslines, there's a... We'll go take you over there. <laughs> that's what she was waiting on. <laughs> So cool. Welcome aboard. Look, there's fresh water here. Oh, oh baby. Yeah. It's not a bit rough. <laughs> it just breaks. This is the coolest thing I've ever seen. So you heat the water. It's an actual bathhouse. Yeah, it's got a uh, wet back on the fire out there to heat the water. Oh, a bathtub. Oh, oh my God. Mrs. Brown's There's boys. Yeah. She's Mrs. Brown. That's her. <laughs> she. It's hilarious. I've now been living at sea for 16 years, and I've never ever come across anything as wholesome for the boating community as this. Built purely out of the generosity of the locals. Ovens, stoves, barbecues donated for anyone and everyone to use for zero monetary gain. The whole facility is based on honesty and consideration for others where even the firewood is chopped up by anyone volunteering to do so for others. It made me very proud that a place like this can exist on out there and be so well looked after and cared for by everyone. And she goes, this place was built by Eric Webster and his many friends apparently. This is the Great Barrier and the sailing community spirit all in one right here. Did our part. If you come here, chuck a couple of bucks in here. Help, help Webster's friends and family. I'm gonna smoke that uh, kingfish that we got yesterday. Ah. 
So this is where you wash your clothes. And they've got the old, I guess you whack her oh, in. What? And then, ah, oh, that rings them. Rings them out. What? Unfortunately, I remember seeing those. So we got the fire going for the smoke kingfish. And looking at the footage now, apparently I had a buddy on my arm. We have to leave the smoker for two hours to do its thing. So let's take you for a ride in my brother's tinny. So this is called a Staby Craft. This is a 1450 built right here in New Zealand. This is not a paid promotion. Wish it was. It's just a solid boat. This is my brother's one. And, uh, it's got a 60 on the back. It goes like a little rocket. Check this out. So now it was time to prepare that pizza. Hold on, sugar. Why you look so sad? Come on now, mama. Ain't nothing here so bad. Good job, Gamero Uno. I'm just going to put some more manuka leaves on there to get that nice smoky flavor. This one, boy. Just gonna heat up this. There's a hot water cylinder in here. It's got a wet back on this fireplace, and then we could have a hot bath or a hot shower with fresh spring water. It all seems to be coming from up in the mountain somewhere, and sort of just filling up. Got it going, and it's not gonna take too long. So we have about one, two, three, four separate fires going on right now. This place is just so cool. It almost reminds me of like outback Canada, maybe Quebec little taste of home here in New Zealand. And it smells so rich. It's like a eucalyptus almost that they're burning. So it's a really cool experience. I'm glad we came here. A lot of juice. <laughs> Look at the juice on top. Oh boy. Hey okay, guys, this is my first pizza dough ever in my adulthood. <laughs> and it fell apart. Yeah, I know. Mmm. <laughs> Get a plate. So good. Is it? Oh, yes. All right. It's been just over two hours. Let's have a look ski. That is so good. Alright, we've got hot water happening. Liz, there you go. Get out of here. <laughs> It was such a nice few days with the family. Sailing around the world is amazing, but there is something very special about being home. I left New Zealand when I was 22 years old to work and sail around the world. And this has already been the most time I've spent in New Zealand since leaving home. And I was loving every minute of it. Make sure you subscribe and join us again next Sunday, where we will head north on our quest to sail around the whole of Aotearoa, New Zealand.